Hi, my name is Christoph Reichert. I'm with CBR Technology. We are a California-based Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central Partner with headquarters in Huntington Beach and a satellite office in San Francisco. Before we dive right into the software, I would like to show you an ERP core module uh, overview, which outlines the construction industry specific functionality that you typically would care about in an ERP system. And I wanted to make sure you realize the depth and breadth of the product. Uh, obviously, in addition to the core accounting functionality of a general ledger with budgeting, cash management, cash flow, flow forecasting capabilities, you have full fixed asset management, AR, sales order processing, service management, inventory, accounts payable, purchase order processing capabilities. So I'll touch on some of these during our demo, but I wanted to uh, show you a brief flow uh, chart that shows the interaction between these modules and the, the level of uh, integration you'll see in the Business Central product. In addition, what I think is most critical to realize is that on top of the ERP system functionality outlined in this chart, you'll get full integration with the various Microsoft products which are running on the Microsoft Cloud, specifically the CRM or what is now referred to as the Customer Engagement Module, Office 365 for, of course, integration with Outlook, uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Teams, Power BI, Power Apps, and the new Microsoft Flow product as well. Power BI, Power Apps, and Power and the Microsoft Flow products are fairly new additions to the Microsoft uh, software offering, and um, they essentially offer you integration, reporting, data analysis. Um, between the ERP system and other Microsoft systems. For example, uh, one of the things you could easily configure is an event, let's say in job costing, going over budget, triggering an interaction with an email to Office 365 uh, for one of your team members to follow up on a particular uh, job that is uh, currently in trouble. Things of that nature can easily be configured with these types of add-ons, so you're looking way beyond a basic ERP system in that these types of integrations offer you extreme flexibility throughout the entirety of the business process and go be way beyond just accounting and ERP-related functionality. I've now launched a Dynamics 365 platform in a web browser environment. This is a standard web browser. It will run on any operating systems. Obviously, it's web browser independent for the most part. Um, all browsers have slight variations, but Microsoft really does a, a quite excellent job in making this product look uh, identical across Chrome, Firefox, uh, Safari, Explorer, or any of the, the core mainstream browsers out there in the marketplace. Obviously, because it's a, a, a cloud-based solution, this will run anywhere in the world uh, after authenticating yourself. And with the Office 365 uh, two-step authentication procedures in place, uh, you can rest assured that this is also uh, quite uh, difficult to access without proper authorization. Um, so I've now currently configured myself to be a, connected to a company called Kronos USA. Throughout the internet you'll find uh, Business Central training videos and demos that will talk about this company file. Uh, when, when you are interested in this product, we'll be able to configure you with a trial account, which will give you access to this Kronos USA company um, at your own pace and leisure to walk through and kick the tires on this product uh, to your heart's content. I'm currently logged in as a job uh, manager or a project manager, and as such, all my menus and uh, menu structures will reflect that role. Uh, it's quite easy to change your role around. If you go into my settings here, you can go into the system and change uh, yourself from project manager to other roles in the organization that are predefined, and you can define yourself new uh, roles as well. I'm going to uh, dive right into a job. So as a construction company, I obviously built things and in my job environment, I have a couple of sample company uh, sample uh, projects set up in here, specifically this one here, reception era remodel that I'm working on. And when I drill down on this with my job number, which is uh, you know set up by the system here, I will have the ability to see general information about the job, such as the address of the customer and the job, as well as project manager information and things of that nature. And then I dial into the details of the lines or job task numbers, as Business Central calls it. 
As you can see here, I have a very simple phase approach of phase one through four with begin totals and end totals and then individual lines that make up uh, specific parts of each phase. Now I stopped myself with the beginning and end total but I could have nested multiple begin totals and end totals so in, in very large and complicated projects you would of course have multiple levels here. Now each, uh, each task can have a start date end date and you can record both budgets and actuals and billable uh, revenues uh, items for each line as well. I'll talk about that in a bit more um, a bit more in a little bit. Uh, finally, uh, you also have uh, posting information that you can set up and configure with regards to uh, the WIP accounting side of things, work in progress, and how that is being treated by the system and what type of um, billing you incur on this. You can, of course, do percent completion billing. You can do time and material and whatever other job uh, types you'd like to configure as, as hybrids of those two. Um, okay, and then when we dive into the details of the job, you'll see their pull-down menus here with regards to reporting, price configurations, and other settings. Generally speaking, when you have jobs, there's three types of interactions you have with the rest of the system, specifically resources, which are typically employees or subcontractors of the company. You have items or inventory items that are uh, being used on an item, so if you have um, you know, usable, if you have consumable items that are being used up in the process, uh, then you would um, do that through inventory control and the general ledger, of course, which allows you to bypass either the resource or the item configuration so that you can um, just hit your GL directly. Now, um, in addition to that, um, you have a number of copy functions in the system. So if, if you work off templates where certain jobs are similar to other jobs and you like to bring over these levels of details from other existing jobs you've done in the past, you can do that with copy functionality uh, and doing things of that nature quite easily. Talking about resources real quick is you have resource definitions and resources are typically people or persons that you are working with. These are either employees or subcontractors. They typically have some sort of a unit cost assigned as well as a, uh, a price uh, or, or billable rate that they are associated with and you can set that all up in the uh, resource setup in here as you can see you have quite a um, set of information that is being used for each resource. Now in addition to the data you see here, you also have the ability to attach um, documents uh, on the right hand side here under attachments here you see documents you can see the ability to take PDFs, Excel, Word documents, whatever you like and attach them to a resource. A resource also has capacity assigned to it and the capacity allows you to do capacity planning for a resource and, um, and uh, look at load factors and things of that nature as well. Um, when it comes to pricing, of course, the pricing can be different and the cost can be different from project to project. So you have the ability to override that as well. So maybe you have an arrangement with a subcontractor where there's a core rate of 154, but if you bill out to a different project, it's at a lower rate and the cost is at a lower or a different rate and all of that can be tracked in the price configuration here for that resource as well. Finally, uh, when it comes to resources, you of course also have the ability to record timesheets if you care to use that function of the system. So timesheets are uh, basically exactly what, what uh, they mean and they essentially allow you to track hours worked on projects uh, and tasks by individual people. So I have Linda here working on these tasks and um, as you can see here, I assign a job number, a job task, a description of what was done, whether or not it's billable or chargeable to the job or not, and how many hours were spent. Now, in addition to that, you can also track other information about uh, this item. Um, you can create timesheet comments and line comments for these as well. Once you record your timesheets, you can submit them for, um, for processing. So a user can enter all the details, but it has to be approved by a supervisor. And once it's approved, it can be posted. So on the right hand side here in this fact box, this area under timesheet status called a fact box, it will show you how many hours you've entered how many have been, have been submitted, because you can submit one line at a time, how many have been rejected or approved, and what your posted numbers are as well.
So we have quite a bit of detailed information available right in here. And there's a number of third-party uh, solutions out there that interface with Microsoft as well. Okay, so that's a timesheet overview. Finally, when you come back to a purchasing site, I would like to just walk you through a simple purchase invoice. So if you have a subcontractor that doesn't bill you by the hour, but they bill you for a piece or some piece work that was done on a particular job, you would simply go to purchase invoices here, create a new purchase invoice, select the or identify the vendor who did the work so let's say this was uh, first up consultants and they did some consulting work for us in this uh, we provided them they provide us with an invoice number here and of course you have you know lots more information behind this uh, that you can blend in and out like this with the show more show less option and now i would like to go in and actually create a, a gl entry as far as an expense so i'm going to cost this out to the job cost account and I'm just going to hit my, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the uh, job cost account. I just hit my GL account number in our job here. And I uh, go to my um, job 50, I, th I believe it's 50, let me pull this up here, 50. 0300 account and the description of what was done. So let's say professional services were rendered. Um, so I can put that in here. And then here's where you would identify the job and the job task for which this is related to. So I'm picking the job in here and under the job task and then see the specific lines within that job that you saw on the previous screen. I'll pick the consulting task line here and that is the allocation to that particular line and I put in a charge of let's say $400 which is a non-taxable transaction and that's all I have to do. Now once you record the transaction of course if the same uh, vendor provided services for many other jobs or different lines within the same job I would just continue to fill in this detail here and I would uh, have the ability to complete that in quite a large extent as you can see i have quite a few fields here that i can just lines that i keep um, filling out once it's done you can request approval for this so you can separate the the folks that enter the record from the folks that approve the transaction and the approval could be dollar sensitive so i'm christoph here and i'm working on this transaction this transaction is under 500 dollars and it doesn't require approval so i can just post it myself directly using the posting functions but um, if I try to post it above my limit, it would force me to request an approval instead. So under request approval, you simply select the send approval request function um, and it would send an email to my supervisor and the supervisor would have the ability to reject or to, um, to um, uh, approve the transaction. Another integration that I mentioned earlier was the Flow or Microsoft Flow integration. And the flow allows you to do many different things for certain transactions. So for example, if this, this invoice to this vendor triggered some sort of secondary process, you can create flows that are beyond just a basic uh, proof of request that create new records in other systems uh, in Microsoft interfaces with a whole slew of other cloud-based solutions out there. And uh, with these uh, create flow uh, integrations, you can trigger those types of events. I'm going to go back out and not save this, but just uh, save it, but not post it. So I'm going to just go out of the system. And, uh, and now I have this transaction awaiting, you know, further processing in the system. Uh, finally, uh, with regards to extensions, I also like to talk briefly about the ability to load modules and add additional modules to the system. And so modules are things that are outside of this, um, out of, outside of the core Microsoft functionality. And with the extension management module here, you can, for example, get PayPal integration out of the box by simply loading this module and installing it on your system and getting PayPal uh, credit card processing capabilities built into the system. So that's a new functionality that Business Central has added, Microsoft has added to Business Central, where all the customizations and modifications in the system are no longer done in the core product itself, but they're done in these extensions. And you can then um, put them out in, into your production environment uh, using that functionality. Um, I appreciate your time. Please reach out to us at 855-227-0700 for a, an additional demo or to arrange for a trial account. Uh, trial accounts are free of charge for 30 days and you have the ability to take this system through its paces at your own 
um, timing and your own availability and uh, we'd be happy to assist you with data migration, implementation services, training on the system and all professional services surrounding the implementation and maintenance of this system. Thanks for your time. Take care.